Yep guys, that thumbnail is not clickbait. And I'm gonna show you how I bought a cow or two. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. Alternative investments, that's what everyone is looking for at the moment. Bonds suck, house prices are a little bit too high and hard work, so everyone's trying to look for a new place to diversify. It's forced many investors into riskier things than stocks like crypto, trainers, Pokemon cards, bathwater. Well, maybe bathwater isn't that risky. At least you can drink it. And this journey to me buying a cow all started on the free Discord when someone posted on there that they found an app where they can buy and sell cattle. So naturally, pretty much anything I find on the Discord, I have to look into. What I found was a pretty good financial startup business from South Africa called Livestock Wealth. In short, Livestock Wealth is a company that connects farmers to investors and somehow they make money. Livestock Wealth finds growing farmers in South Africa who are looking to grow their business with new investor money. The farmers buy all of the cows, all the macadamia nut trees and all the gardens and Livestock Wealth goes out there and looks for investors who want to buy those assets. You can basically pay for the price of a cow as it is now, then the farmer rears it and feeds it and grows it nice and big and strong and eventually sells it on for a profit. The investor gets their initial investment back plus their share of the profit and Livestock Wealth takes a little fee as well. And the returns on these investments ain't half bad with a 5-7% to projected return on a standard cow and 10-14% to projected return on a pregnant cow. It even states in the FAQs that these profits are guaranteed. Guaranteed? So when I saw these numbers, I needed to know more. I wanted to learn as much about this company as I could as possible. And so I set off for about six months, having a look around, seeing what they're up to. And to be fair, they're creating quite a lot of noise. After looking into Livestock Wealth, I still had a couple of questions. So I reached out to them and wondered if I could get an interview with someone from the company. And luckily enough for me, the CEO of Livestock Wealth decided that he wanted to come on and have a chat with me himself. So I'll jump into that interview right now. You can watch that if you want. Trust me, it answers loads of the questions that I know will be going through your head right now. And after this interview, I'll show you what I've bought, how I did it, and what my plan with Livestock Wealth is going forward. And I'll also try to address some concerns that even I still have. When I came across Livestock Wealth, I thought, ah, this is a really good idea. But to go, tell me where you're coming from today and tell me about a little bit about Livestock Wealth and what your mission is with Livestock Wealth. So I'm, 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 I'm in Johannesburg uh, as we speak in South Africa. Um, so I'm, I'm the founder and CEO of Livestock Wealth. Really the, the vision for li Livestock Wealth has and always has been to revolutionize investing. Um, really uh, by just going back to basics to how wealth was created in the past, which is through agriculture and and agricultural investments that is owning cows or planting trees you know that's how even if you go back to biblical times wealth that's how it was done in in, in the african context uh, which is which is where we are based most people do not understand financial um, uh, complicated financial instruments like shares unit trusts uh, derivatives etc uh, but if you talk to them about owning cattle, uh, they relate to and it's something that speaks to them from a heritage point of view yeah. and something that a five-year-old can understand. That's really what we are about. Yeah, I think that's what that's really good actually because that's something that I, when I looked at this, uh, when I looked at Livestock Wealth, I thought, oh, this is really simple. I'm, I'm simply just buying a cow and someone is going to take care of it for me and then eventually it will get sold on and you know this is the yeah you're right this is the basic form of investing it's the basic form of you know simple business is that is that where my money's going then if i'm investing in livestock wealth where what is my money going towards and what does it produce and how do i get my investment back what are the real simple basics of my investment if i'm putting money into livestock wealth? sure 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 so there's there's three there's three legs to this table. Uh, on, the, on the one side is the farmer who already has the cow. 
that you want to own as as Paul out in, in the UK. And then on the other side, there's you, the investor with the money who wants to own this cow that the farmer has. So Livestock Wealth is that platform that enables uh, Paul and Mr. Farmer to meet. So the farmer then sells you the cow, it becomes your cow as it grows. And then when, when the cow goes to market, it has increased in value due to its physical size. Uh, and then that then, that's then becomes the end of your investment and payday for you. And then you can then restart again on another cow um, with on the same terms, almost like your fixed deposit at the bank. So the money comes from you uh, through, through, through us to the farmer and at the end of the investment when the, when the, when the cow is sold for meat, the money then goes from the farmer uh, to, to livestock wealth and then from livestock wealth to your wallet in your, on, on our app and from, from the wallet on our app then you decide whether you wanna, want it paid back onto, onto your normal bank account or whether you want to reinvest and buy another asset as well. And there's no limit to how many assets you can have. And I can imagine this going forward is a lot more like like a compounding investment as well, isn't it? Because you you sort of, so the more you continue to reinvest into the new cow afterwards, the more future earnings that you'll gain from this, I guess. So, yeah. and, Absolutely. In fact, um, it's the original, the cow is the original ca compounding interest, you know, it's, 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 it's the original <laughs> compounder. Uh, and oh, I like that. And it's in, a good in, sales pitch, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, in, in our case, really, in our case, if if you started off with, say, um, on the pregnant cow, where you own a pregnant cow, and when the baby uh, is born or the calf is born and then it's weaned from its mother and sold, that that's the end of your investment. So you make your initial investment by, plus a profit, which is almost a third of the money earned from the sale of the, of the calf that comes to you as your profit. So then, um, for example, if you did that and, and you had about only, only, nine, only nine pregnant cows that you invest in, which is just under 18,000, how many pounds? I'm trying to convert in my head here. Yeah, I've uh, got a lot of conversions it's, of it's this about eight, today, yeah, like, Because one pregnant cow is about, is about a thousand pounds. So if you're, yeah. buying, if you're buying nine, that's about 9,000 pounds. So then the profits you're going to get from, from the sale of the calves uh, is enough to buy you cow number 10 for the following year. So now you, your, okay, your number yeah. of cows has increased, but you haven't put in a new, a, 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 an extra cent from your own pocket. You're using the profits from the cows to buy more assets. So your money is growing on its own in the true compound way without, without you, you doing think that, so, so do you think that Livestock Wealth has got the capabilities of growing that much with, say, investments to add that, you know, the farmers that you have contact with, do, do they have the capability to grow and sort of add that new cow every year or every couple of years? Is that, it's what they do. Is that way you see that's, the company going? That's yeah. what farmers do on a daily basis. You know, while while you and yeah. I, you know, we do our things in in studios and in the, you know in the offices, the farmer's job is to grow wealth through reproduction. You know, just making sure that the yeah. cow is pregnant, uh, gives birth, and the calf is safe enough until it's ready to sell. Our job is to, to find the best farmers. So we do a lot of hard work selecting and vetting the farmers so we don't get amateur farmers on the platform so because we understand that this is this is people's hard-earned money you know you want that money to be managed by experts just like you wouldn't take your your child to a, a school of, of of with with incompetent teachers in much the same way we we want to take investors money to farmers who are properly know what they're doing who are experts at the game and with that, with that investment, because I've read obviously on your website at the pregnant cow and the beef cow and the macadamia nuts and the connected gardens are very slightly different because they're more of a renting and buyback process. Um, so they're slightly different. Um, but with the cows specifically, you've, you say on there you can get a five to seven percent return 
on a grown cow and I think it was a much higher sort of like 11 to 13 percent return on a pregnant cow how how guaranteed is that what are the risks to the investor with these uh, returns are, are these returns really sort of guaranteed or just let me know what the risk is absolutely so what we do and part of our contracting with the farm is we fully aware that you know um, as an investor we put when we, when we built livestock world really we built it with the investor in mind mostly who's far away like if you are in London and you and the cow is sick that you've invested in there really isn't much you can do there you can try and post the medicine and send prayers and and whatnot <laughs> but the farmer is the guy or, or lady who is fully in charge of the well-being of this animal so so something happens to the cow then the farmer as part of our agreement with them is that it's their responsibility to make sure that these cows are alive okay so do they have them insured do they have them insured Ab or? absolutely so what okay. farmers mostly do is they they plan for normal losses in any event you know they um so out of 100 cows, it's, it's expected in, in farming, you're going to lose maybe two or three per year to lightning, to sickness, etc. So, so the farmer will then start off the year with 103 cows, knowing that at the end of the, of the year, they will end up with 100. And, and then life is normal uh, uh, to them. So it's essentially, now our farmers, what we then do when we engage with them is that um, a farmer wouldn't put all his cows on the livestock world platform. So if a farmer has got 100 cows, only 49 cows can go onto the livestock world platform. So anything happens to one of the cows, he's got 51 other cows that he can use to replace uh, the one that, that something happened to. Okay, so that's good. So if there is anything that would happen to the... Pr this, I hate talking about animals in, in this such way, but we have to, don't we? If the product that I've bought, which is essentially my investment in the cow, this gets replaced if something bad was to happen to the animal at all. Oh, that's, that's, so that's interesting. So th uh, that feels like a very, relatively low risk for you know uh, a 13% return. It's quite good. Low risk, but also you would, you would know that... Uh... At 13%, South Africa has got a higher interest rates environment than the UK. So it, it seems high in, in, in UK terms where, your, where your, your, rep, your repo rates or bank rates are next to zero. Um, yeah, <laughs> don't know that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so, but in ours is, a, is an environment with a higher, with a higher, higher inflation as well. Like our inflation is about 5%. So to our investors, um, if the inflation is five percent and they're getting a ten percent return, that's a it's a five percent uh, growth in value, which is which is which is decent. I think on your on your guys' side, it's around about five percent at zero percent inflation. Uh, so it roughly in in it's, it's it's still roughly the same um, if you if you strip out inflation. Well, that's very interesting. So investing in any form generally requires some risk. So. As the CEO of this company, what are my risks to my investment with Livestock Wealth right now? Just if there's, if there's anything that you consider as the risk that they should be informed of, what, what do you think it is? So we, we've looked at the risk factor around, around uh, agriculture. We've looked at all the risks. You know, from, from day number one uh, in October 2015 when, when we started, you know, the first email that we got is, what if my cow dies? You know that that was the first email that we got. So, like for for cows, we insure the cows. For for the for the farmers and the trees, there is generally insurance anyway in, in the in, in the insurance market for the risk. So, essentially, we have priced in the risk so that the return is not like crazy like stock market return where you can get a share like growing up five percent in a day or something like that. You're not gonna have that with the cow, so it's 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 a, it's a it's a ten percent return, which which is not like hor horrendously high, but yeah. at the same time, uh, we've built in the risk to how we minimize the risk into your of of your portfolio. Yeah, so that, that's that's essentially what we have done. Yeah, so so we we've removed we've removed 
essentially all risks and ensured whatever other risks we couldn't ensure. Lovely, lovely. So the final thing I'd really ask you is um, the treatment of the animals, because I'm guessing a lot of people would be interesting, interested in the ethical treatment of the animals. How, how do these farms differ? What sort of things do you put in place to find farmers that are at least ethical to the point of treatment during a cow's life? So that's a great question. Um, so we, as livestock world, really believe uh, believe in ethical um, on farm uh, uh, treatment of of animals. So we we abhor factory farming where there is tons of cows cramped in one place uh, with no room to move etc um, so so that that has been our stand from day one and it will be our stand a hundred years from now um, where we believe cows should be free to move uh, happy they should be healthy um, and treated humanely um, I, I, like I, I love having this discussion around, you know, people saying, okay, what about, you know, plant, plant meat and all that. I think, yeah, you know, like yeah. uh, there's room for both, you know, there's room for, <laughs> there's room for the plant beggars, there's room for, you know, the real meat beggar, you know, because, uh, yeah. uh, you know, as, as much as I hate bees when they sting you or as, as, I, as, as, as much as I hate flies if they come around, but there's something that they're doing to the environment, you know, like when a cow is, when a cow is, is stamping on the soil and, and, um, and leaving its urine on the, on the, on the, on, 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 on the soil and eating this grass, it's, 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 it's doing something ecologically. It's recycling old grass, planting new seeds. Um, it's, it's, it's fertilizing the soil. It's adding urea, which is from the urine. To back to the soil and if there were no cows eating that grass all these grasslands would become wastelands um, that's that because that, which other animal would replace the cow in eating all this grass because the grass must be must be mowed we can't use lawn mowers in the Serengeti you know we, we we've got to have the cows eating the grass converting it into into protein um, and my belief is it's always been uh, have less meat but good quality meat you know that's that, that's how i think we can change the world uh, yeah this life. yeah to be fair that's that's a big thing over here at the moment is a lot of you know your gym your gym bunnies and that are uh, really going for the grass-fed meat and rather than the factory grown meat and the and the corn fed meat um, so yeah, so you're providing sort of high quality meat. I know in South Africa out, out there, you guys eat a lot of meat. You you guys are barbecuing every day, aren't you? So um, of course, it's it's a bit of a dream for me to be honest. I'd love to be out there in the sun, like barbecuing every day. Uh, so um, yeah, I I get it. I I do get this, and and it's it's this is a very interesting concept. This uh, livestock wealth. It's it's really inter interesting because I don't want to shove everything in the stock market right now i've 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 got my money uh in stock markets and things but alternative investment investments out there away from real real estate this really does seem like a good option and i i, I like how you're talking about the risk because the low risk is really my thing um me personally is low risk is one of the things that i want coupled with long-term compounding wealth and i think that's what we're getting with uh, livestock wealth at the moment. Uh, is there anything you wanted to add? Is there anything specifically, any message you wanted to get out there to the people watching my video? Or sure, sure, sure. I, I would, I would really encourage um, all your viewers um, uh, in the UK and other countries. You know, twenty percent of our investors are outside of South Africa. You know, so even though we are a South African company, uh, but uh, twenty percent of people are in the UK, uh, Germany mostly. Uh, France, U.S., Canada, um, and those are people who have been for, for the last five years, you know, uh, trusting us and, um, um, and and using the investment in agriculture uh, to, to grow wealth. Now, what I love most about the work that we do is the change we're causing in farmers' lives in that uh, your investment is, is a direct investment on the farmer. 
um, and Life Cycle, we make a small commission out of that invest or, or for the for the job we do on the app, linking you and the farmer. But you know the the change you see in farmers' lives when they've when they've sold cows to Paul and then use some money to buy the tractors, use the the money to buy better bulls, uh, so that they, their farms become more profitable. That that change is real impact. You know, it's not like you know uh, fuzzy impact where you have to like. Do number crunching you can like say okay there was no tractor here now there's a tractor there was no cattle handling facilities now there is you know that's that's the kind of impact which 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 we truly love you know and and we believe it's 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 changing how investment work where it's no longer we're not doing charity work we we're funding farmers helping them grow and we want something in return uh, for for our efforts you know of, of banking on the farmer you know yeah that's amazing. Um, just one last final question that I just wanted to ask you. Um, it's based around regulation um, because that would be something uh, on on my Discord. A lot of people have spoken about livestock wealth, and they are worried about regulation. Obviously, you're not going to be protected by anything here in the UK. Probably not in Germany or the US either. So, in South Africa, what regulation are you under to safely store uh, my my money and my investment? For sure. So in, in South Africa, there is an, an Agricultural Produce and Agents uh, Council, which we are a member of, um, which govern, uh, governs and regulates the buying and selling of livestock between two people. So we, as, an, as a livestock world agent, are governed by an Act of Parliament uh, and, and APEC, they call it. So the link is on our website at the bottom there. Uh, it's, a, it's a real regulator with real teeth. Uh, where our job is to honor the the agency role of us linking the farmer to the investor at the start of the investment and then at the end of the investment when within within the agent for you the investor to sell sell your product to market or back to the farmer so uh, we are properly regulated by a real regulator with seed that's governed by an act of parliament that has got really serious punitive measures uh, for for non-conformance, yeah. So we we've been proudly members of of, of APEC, and uh, for six years we've been um, servicing uh, servicing um, people from across the world, um, and I think our reputation speaks for itself there as well. Lovely, that's a great answer. Thank you very much for being with me today, uh, Nakuto Shezi from Livestock Wealth. Thank you very much. Now, I know what you're thinking because I think I'm thinking it too. Is this legit? Livestock Wealth sounds like a really good deal, but there definitely are still risks. There's always risks with investments. The main one that screams out at you is Mr. Shezi could just run. It is very simple that this investment platform is not financially regulated. If you send your money over to Livestock Wealth, it gets converted to RAND and it's in their hands. There is a hell of a lot of trust needed here for international investors. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to take the risk for you and I'm going to see if they are trustworthy. The second biggest risk that I can think of right now is that it's a currency risk. First of all, you're going to get currency charges going back and forth. So you need to factor them in. You probably need to have a good bank that doesn't charge you a lot for currency fees. The second is volatility versus the RAND. The British pound has got much stronger against the RAND consistently over many years. And it is a lot more volatile than most currencies. So it may be something to think about factoring your entrance and exit from the RAND. I honestly don't know how much more looking into livestock wealth I can do without actually going over there and seeing it for myself. So what I've decided to do, so you don't have to, is buy a couple of cows and see what happens in six months. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know that I don't invest any of my YouTube earning. Everything that I've ever earned from YouTube is sitting in a bank account somewhere that I can't get to because it's still got to be taxed first. But that doesn't mean I can't invest some of it on behalf of the channel. And if for whatever reason I don't get my money back, I can write that off against tax just fine. So I feel like I'm not taking too much of a risk with this one. So that's what I've done. I've gone out and I've decided to buy 
two cows from Livestock Wealth. You can buy all sorts of different things on Livestock Wealth. You can buy a free range cow, a pregnant cow, connected garden, a macadamia nut tree. They, they're all sorts of little different products. They all provide different returns. If you don't like the idea of cow slaughtering for meat and all that, you can go in and buy some quite renewable products. They're actually pretty cool and I can see myself buying a couple of macadamia nut trees because the missus really doesn't like the idea of uh, slaughtering for meat. She's a big vegetarian and that. So I might have to go out and buy her a couple to maybe offset the ethics or whatever. And buying was very simple. You just select your asset, put it in your basket, and you can see here that my cows cost 23,058 Rand. And it's very simple. You fill out your payment, visa or debit card, and there you go. I've paid 1,195 pounds to buy two cows. And this bit was easy. I very quickly got confirmation. They were very quick to put the money into my account and show my account. But it did take a good few weeks for them to allocate my assets. It did take quite a while for them to actually buy a cow for me. They even sent me an email about two or three weeks in to tell me that my purchases had been delayed. I got to admit, that did spook me a little bit. You know, there's a lot of trust in here. But right on their rescheduled date, they did send me two cows. And you can see them right there. My two cows. <laughs> you get little details about them, where they are, where they live and what farm they're on. And now apparently I just wait. And on that date, sometime in November, the funds will come back into my account plus profit. And I will have the choice then of withdrawing or reinvesting my money. And what I'm going to do at that point in six months is I'm going to withdraw my money. I'm going to try and get it back into my bank account. And that's going to have to be a follow-up video in about six months. So in six months time, come back to me and see if I got my money back from Livestock Wealth. I'll go through everything. I'll see if I made the right return and we'll see if it was worth it with all the volatility and the currency fees. Hopefully that could help people to decide whether Livestock Wealth is actually legit or not. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'm now gonna go away and forget about cows. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. Full disclosure, guys, this video is not sponsored by Livestock Wealth. I really did like the look of the app. I like the idea of the business. So I wanted to see if it was legit or not. I just wanted to add this bit in at the end to see if we could catch any idiot commenters. Go have a look. However, this video is sponsored by Briscoe Bathwater. If you want to own the essence of a 12 hour shift, then buy Briscoe Bathwater for three easy payments of $29.95. Tastes great too.